Um, I've spoken with Carbo, uh, the chief of police here in Louisville, and we both do agree um, that technology, uh, if used correctly, uh, can benefit us far more than just adding more police officers. Another thing that, that is kind of attached to this that I would also like to see happen is, is a little bit more of a citizen involvement in a program. Um, uh, a little bit about me, I grew up uh, in the wrong side of the tracks, I guess that you would say. Um, I'm 24, I'm glad to say that, that, I, that I can get involved in my community regardless if I had uh, voted in a prior election or not. Uh, I do take pride in our country. I do take pride in Louisville. Um, and I do believe that we do have a great police force. There has been a bit of a rise in crime here in Louisville, and I think a lot of that is going to uh, neglected areas uh, of Louisville. Not, not getting the same attention as far as the east side of Louisville that some regions in Louisville do get. Um, I would like to see more of a uh, community involvement, working directly with the police department in some sort of a training capacity to educate them on how not to be a victim and how to defend themselves better. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I speak regularly with the Louisville Police Association. Uh, I attend a meeting, I actually help them with their website. And uh, at least the, the best guys of Louisville, they're the best that the city can offer. They're out there risking their lives to protect us. Now, I want to give them the tools they need. Many of them talk about wanting additional resources, additional tools. We have programs like the 287G program that will allow our police officers to get additional training, to have access to the ICE database, and really have an opportunity to make a difference with the illegal immigration problem we have in Louisville. I want to give them those tools. My opponent doesn't. You know, I want to give them tools, for example, they have bicycles here that if they ride down by how much plaza and make their presence known, I've asked them, do you think that'll make a difference? They said, of course it would. We have bicycles, but we're not allowed to use them. We don't have the training. Uh, they don't want to uh, deal with liability. That's not true leadership. I think we need to give them the access to those bicycles to make their presence known. So I do support them, and I want to give them more of the tools that they say they need. Okay, keep standing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're in hot seat. What is your assessment of multimodal transportation, the multimodal transportation program, and how, how would you improve upon it? Uh, you're talking about the rail? I, don't say I just read the questions, I don't know. Ask one more time. What is your assessment of multimodal transportation program, and how would you improve it? You know, the rail system is going to be coming through Louisville, and it's, uh, it's an exciting old time. It's going, to make, uh, it's going to make it a lot easier for people to get to Louisville and enjoy Old Town as we do this revitalization effort. Now, I talked to the Louisville police officers, and a number of them told me they wish instead of three stations, we had none, and the train went all the way through, because they are talking about crime. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to, make some it's going to create some challenges for them in combating crime. Now I am fully confident in our police force, and I know that they can handle it. If they need additional officers, hopefully we'll be able to provide that. But uh, as far as improving it, uh, again, I think just making sure that those stations, and the, and the people that park their cars there, we have enough policemen that can monitor that and make sure any additional crime uh, coming through because of the ease of access, that we handle that appropriately. Okay, Dean? I'm all for it. I think Charles Emery has done, along with a lot of other people, have done some tremendous work over the last few years to get a plan in place where we can have more global transportation here in our community. You know, I'm born and raised in Texas, five generations of my family here in Texas, and I drive everywhere, and it's hard to give that up. But you know, we're getting in our world where we are starting to burn through energy too fast. We are starting to do things. We do need to start having some mass transportation. And when done properly, the way DCETA is going forward, DCETA is already way on top of the security. They're already working with not only our police enforcement, but also all the cities that it goes through, their police enforcement, and they will be hiring also enforcement to make sure that we don't have the criminal in there, but make sure it does provide quality transportation for you and I without having to sit on the freeway all day long, being able to have mass transportation here in our community. I do agree. I think I think it's a great approach to relieve some of the uh, cost of repairing the roads also in Louisville. I think it adds a unique touch to Louisville. It will draw in more businesses. Now, what I'd like to see is people exploit that a little bit more. Now, there's there's several different cities that also have light rail in them, and let's mimic that same that, that same policy as well. Now, uh, kind of connected again. Um, nobody knows where we're going to be economically a year from now, as far as nationally and statewide. 
So we need to make sure that we're securing every avenue of revenue so we can maintain city services to the highest standard, whether it be through the police force. I mean, all, all, all this talking about how we utilize technology, uh, police force, and training, none of this can happen without the economic development. Um, so we need to make sure that we're using that correctly. And when we do have an opportunity, like the light rail, to redefine Louisville a little bit. I mean, that, that, that is a very interesting uh, uh, asset to the city that not a lot of other uh, cities around us will have. Um, let's utilize it, let's exploit it, let's make sure that we get the benefits of it as well. Okay, keep standing. Okay. What does a mayor do and what unique qualities do you have to be the leader of the Louisville City Council? Perfect. I'm, I'm a little bit younger. I'm 24 years old, guys. I have the energy, I have the unique creativity style to get us past some of these more complicated issues that some people might be stuck on uh, on two sides of the fence. I hate to keep on picking on legal immigration, but that seems to be a very, very high topic here in the city. Um, there are unique ways that we can approach it that don't focus on dividing the city, that don't focus on drawing a line in the sand saying, you take that side, I'll take this side, uh, to uh, the, the, the police train. Um, Guys, if our only model for, for, for that situation is a farmer's grant situation, we, 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 can't, we, we can't view it as such. We have to be a little more creative. We have to adapt a little bit more to our surroundings. But as far as the mayor, um, a fresh new perspective, a fresh new face, and somebody with the energy and the dedication to press our case to our surrounding cities and to press our case to the state. If there's immigration laws that need to be changed, which they all do, uh, I, I would hope that you would see the energy and the dedication to do it. Okay, Winston. The mayor is the face of the city. The mayor sets the tone of the city. A city that has a mayor that isn't known for listening to the people and really finding out what the concerns are and addressing them. That feels a lot different than a city where the mayor wants to listen to those people that address those concerns. You know, uh, my opponent likes to talk about all the experience and the years of experience, but what he needs to talk about is the years of baggage. A lot of people that I speak with feel like the city council are not listening. They're, they're crying for help. Old Town is crying for help. The people are crying for help. So the mayor at the face of the city has to be out there setting the tone and saying, you know what, we're going to have the courage. We're not afraid of those groups like LULAC. We're going to stand up for legal immigration. We're not going to slap, you know, slap in the face by talking about a day labor side. I mean, that's a red flag saying, you know what, we are a sanctuary city. My opponent supported the labor side. So the mayor sets the tone, and I'll set a positive tone. Okay, Dean? Well, as you know, the mayor, uh, Elizabeth, does not have a vote unless in the case of five. We have five council members and the mayor. One council member is in danger, there's not there, and it could be a tie, then the mayor would vote to break the tie. What I think is the comment on the mayor, he at least make himself available to all the citizens. I have since I've lived here for over 25 years. My phone's always published. My business is here. I, own, I live here. I work here every day for over 25 years. I'm open to people to come and talk with me. You can ask me. He can tell you. I'm always there. If you call me, if you email me, if you want to talk to me, I'm always available. Your mayor is incumbent to do that, but you're also the leader of the community to be able to go out and work with your sister city. The mayor of Highland Village, the mayor of Flower Mound, both support me and endorse me. The mayor of the colony endorses me and supports me. I think we've got to work together in continuity and unity to make sure we all grow, to make sure we prosper in these few coming years. Okay, this will be our last question, and we'll start with you. And you, you touched upon it some, each of you, with immigration, but what, uh, what issues do you think that the city of Louisville has with immigration, and how would you help to resolve those issues as the mayor? You know, we all know we have an issue with immigration. And I am totally against illegal immigration. I've always stayed on. I've always been proactive. I've been working with our police department, with our state officials, with our federal officials. Her Solomons, who's one of our good, he's a representative, probably the fifth most powerful man in our state legislature. He's just appointed to the to the uh, uh, committee that will to chair the committee that will handle illegal immigration for the state of Texas. Working with him to help him give us new tools that will enable us to enforce the law. Yes, we are enforcing the law. We are using the CAT program and the ICE program, which, in fact, if you can find out and do your homework and find out the facts, in the last a little over a year, we have detained 680 something people, and ICE has detained 80% of them, or basically 644 some ICE has detained, basically 75% of them 
almost 500 people. The program is working, like the same program they're using in Irving is working here.